Hey everyone, we're going to talk about dog food and feeding time and some toys. You do have to be very careful about the kind of toys that you give your dog. Please make sure that any kind of toys that your dog's going to have unsupervised, that literally means you're staring at the dog or interacting with the dog, make sure that they are toys that your dog cannot tear off. We don't want to have toys that are made out of cloth, fabric, have fiber fill inside them, squeaky toys inside them. Those are great interactive toys, but they need to go away when you're not around. It only takes a second for a dog to tear up a toy, rip off an eyeball, tear off a nose, uh, eat some fiber fill, and the next thing you know, he's got a, a blockage, which usually means surgery. Not to mention you could lose your best friend, but the surgeries are extremely expensive. They can be $10,000, $13,000, depending on, on the type of uh, bowel surgery that your dog has to have. And it, it is a dangerous situation. People don't realize, you know, unless you're in the medical field, how, how really dangerous a bowel blockage is and how complicated the surgery can be. So please be very careful about the toys that you give your dog. Some dogs can have a toy for two years and then all of a sudden they decide that the toy needs to die. So you just need to be very careful about that. Also, I have a problem with if you're going to let your dog chew on something that's fabric, what's the difference between a pillow or your rug and a fabric toy? Not very much. So again, if it's okay for the dog to chew on fabric, he might just think that your clothes, your shoes, the couch, whatever it might be, it really is the same consistency as a toy. If you've got a couch, there's fiber fill inside the couch, just like there's fiber fill inside a toy. So again, to your dog, this could just be one great big toy. Uh, years ago, I had a Rottweiler that used to take my couch cushions off the couch and play with them in the living room, and that was not a real good thing. Um, so it's a toy to them, so you just have to be careful. Toys that are made out of hard rubber, toys that the dog cannot chew pieces off of. You want to use you know, Nyla bones. There's all kinds of stuff that's available out there now that your dog can play with and chew on, especially like if he's in a kennel. You want something that he can chew on without, without causing any concern about him getting pieces and parts off of those toys. It's just kind of like the label on kids' toys where it's like three and over or four and over. There's a reason for that. We don't want a, a baby playing with tiny little Legos and possibly you know, choking to death or whatever. We got to be careful with our dogs at the same way. There's all kinds of really, really cute toys that are out there that are meant to make people happy and buy more of them. And they are very, very cute, but they can be pretty dangerous for your dog. So please be careful of that. Bones. Dogs should not ever, ever get cooked bones. So there's a big difference between raw bones and cooked bones. Cooked bones will always splinter. If your dog ingests that, they, you know, again, can have a perforated gut or a bowel blockage, very dangerous for them. So cooked bones, doesn't matter what kind of a bone it is, if it's been cooked, it's dangerous. You know, people talk about chicken bones and all that. If a dog were to eat a chicken raw, it actually can digest that. Uh, once that chicken has been cooked, you certainly don't want to give them a chicken wing or a chicken leg or something like that because those bones are brittle. Steak bones, ham bones, all kinds of stuff. If they are cooked, they are very dangerous and you should never give them to your dog. Raw bones are actually uh, okay. I like to get the soup bones that they sell at the, soup, the supermarkets and they're raw and they're usually frozen and they've got some marrow on the inside. Just put those in your freezer and those are great chewies to give your dog. You just have to be careful about uh, there's holes in the middle of them and you got to be careful that your dog doesn't get a caught on his tooth or something but usually those are pretty safe. Again make sure that there's there are bones available in the stores that are cooked so you have to be careful about basted bones. It, it needs to be a raw bone or sanitized type bone. They, they do make some that have filling of peanut butter and all kinds of crazy stuff that are actually you know good for your dog. There's plenty of at toys that are out there that your dog can chew on. Um, again, be aware that some of these things do have quite a few calories and sometimes they can cause gastric upset. So I know for a long time they were selling pig ears and those were really, really popular, but too many of those would cause the dogs to get diarrhea. So just be careful about what you're feeding the dog. Treats or, or training, training products. We really like these. They're called nudges. It's jerky cuts and it's just chicken. They're easy to handle and manage. You can tear these off into tiny little pieces and the dogs really love them and they don't 
seem to give the dog's intestinal problem. Now, obviously, if your dog's allergic to chicken, you would want to feed them this. They do have some lamb. They have some beef. These are just really, really easy to use. You can tear them off into tiny, tiny bites for training. You can also use your dog's regular dog food for training. Measure out. Please remember, if you're going to use treats, that's part of the dog's daily calorie allotment. Sometimes people will tell us, you know, we'll see a fat dog and they'll say, yeah, but he only eats two cups of food a day. How many of these is he getting and how many of milk bones and all those kinds of stuff that he's getting as well? You got you got to measure that as well. That's why we like using the dog's regular dog food for training treats. So if your dog eats four cups a day, save two cups for training time. And you can put that in your training pouch and get out there and, and use his food as part of his training. Feeding time for your dog is a big thing and food is very important to dogs. So there's a lot of social status that goes along with food. If you've ever been to a third world country, you already know that food is a huge thing. There's a lot of people that don't have enough food. They go to bed hungry at, at night and basically the person that has the food is the person that's in charge. So sometimes people with their dog, they don't quite understand how important this relationship is between me, the dog, and his food. I have the food. I'm in charge. She's right now asking me by looking at me, can she have some? So that puts me in a position of authority, but I like to rather think of it more as adult versus juvenile. Anything that begs or solicits food takes a juvenile position. By me controlling the food, I am actually taking on the adult position here. So if we can keep this relationship going between juvenile and adult, we have a much better relationship and we, this, we're not gonna be constantly going back and forth between who's in charge, who's not in charge, you know, this, this constantly volleying for that, that top position. Because that's when dogs get themselves in trouble and that's when people get themselves in trouble. So we wanna make sure that she'll follow me around if I have her bowl. Good girl girl. She wants it, but she's not being rude. Good girl. As long as she has her feet on the ground, she can have one. This can be their dog food. Again, I just want you to walk around the house. Dog's feet are on the floor. You can click when his feet are on the ground. If they go start jumping on you, it's no sit. You can, you know, feed them while they're sitting. You can, you know, say uh -uh or off when the dog is jumping all over the place. Let's get some calm, nice behavior with this going on. So we're, we're talking about food and, and like we were saying that basically I'm in, I'm in control. I'm in charge. She's the baby. I'm the adult. And as long as we keep this relationship going, for the most part, dogs can, um, you know, keep themselves from getting too dominant or too forceful or too aggressive. So there's a lot of, a lot of different things that happen when uh, you get outside of this relationship of juvenile versus adult. When two adults, they're always going to be having some kind of conflict over who's controlling space, who's controlling food, all of that kind of stuff. So we want to keep this, this relationship going. So one of the things, you know, just use their food. Uh, we want them to understand that don't be too pushy. Sit. So I want to teach her to wait, wait, good girl. Now, if they lay down, it's fine. She's been taught that, you know, when food comes down, good girl, good girl, that's a good girl. If they charge towards the bowl, you guys are going to have to hold them back. She's being really, really good here, but all of the dogs have been taught, um, don't touch that. So if I hold her leash, you know, it's like you can give them little checks on the leash. And if they go to charge for the bowl, pick the bowl back up. You're going to notice that I'm using a stainless steel bowl. It's a really good idea to feed your dog um, out of uh, either like some kind of pottery or stainless steel. There are dogs that are allergic to plastic. So sometimes you'll see some dogs that their noses will actually start to change color. They'll get lighter or sometimes they get really dry and cracked. And if you're feeding your dog out of some plastic bowls, sometimes they do have an allergy to them. So that is just something to be aware of. Also, these get a lot cleaner. Um, you know, we do wash these out after every time the dog eats. So again, just to kind of help cut down on germs and whatnot. Plastic is porous. But the big thing with these is we do see some dogs that are allergic to plastic. So that's something to be aware of. When you feed your dog, you really want to leave the dog alone while he's eating. And I think it's a great idea that he has his own place where he can eat. You have to be careful, especially if you have children in the house. Kids love to play in dog food. I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but they like to stick their fingers in it and play with it. You have to think about somebody playing with your food while you're trying to eat and somebody coming along and touching your plate. And it's a really, really odd situation for something or someone else to be touching 
the plate or container where you're eating. And it's also very strange for dogs. And they can get, they can get very leery of people coming towards their bowl. So one of the things that we do is if you do have children in the house, or maybe you already have a dog that has guarding behaviors to, to where he's not happy about people coming near his food bowl, you got to be careful. Don't ever like play with the bowl with the feet and tease them and all that kind of stuff. It just really leads to problem behaviors later on. So one of the things that you can do if you've got kids especially, or if you have a dog that has an issue with the bowl, is add food instead of take it away. There used to be some trainers several years ago that would talk about you need to be able to take your dog's food bowl away from him while he's eating. Um, it really causes aggression issues and guarding issues. So what I like to do is just take a piece of their food and take, okay, get it, good girl, and let her eat this out of her bowl. I get another piece of food, get it, good girl, that's a good girl. So my hand coming towards the bowl is adding not trying to take her food bowl away from her. So this is a really good thing if you have a dog who is already showing a little bit of signs of guarding or possession issues. If you're afraid to get your hand down there, you can take a long handled spoon or a ladle, put the dog food in the ladle, especially with little kids, and they can spoon it into the bowl. And then that way the dog sees little hands coming towards the bowl, but they're offering food. Good girl, go ahead, get it but they're not taking the food away. When you feed your dog, I think it's a great idea to have them in another room. Please don't let three or four dogs in the same area, you know, run from one bowl to the next bowl. It causes all kinds of dominance and, and all kinds of strange hierarchy issues. They should be fed in separate rooms or they should be fed in their kennels. We like to feed the dog in the kennel because first of all, he's safe. Um, and second of all, we don't have to worry about him like thinking we're gonna take their bowl away. So we work on teaching the dog kennel, go in and eat a cookie. Good girl, that's a good girl. Come on, baby, oh, good girl. So we do a lot of this throwing a piece of food back there, kennel. Good girl, let her walk in. Good girl, come on, let her walk out. So it's a kennel game. So kennel. Good girl, there you go. And you can start by then, okay, make sure she doesn't just jump out of that kennel either. We want a little bit of a hesitation. So once I get her bowl, kennel, good girl, kennel. And we're gonna go ahead and uh-uh, uh-uh. Wait, good girl, wait. Okay, good girl, good girl, and close the kennel feed her her food inside the kennel. You have little kids, don't let them hang all over the crate. Don't let them stick their fingers in the crate. They really need to be left alone while they're eating so they don't have to worry about ever becoming protective or defensive or whatever. Uh, you know, I think sometimes people think that having children around while they're eating is actually causing some kind of prevention behavior, but it's really not. We just want them to be able to eat their dinner in peace and not have any problems. Come on, baby. Girl. Good girl, let's go. That's a good girl, okay? So again, moving the food bowl around, not letting the dog charge towards the bowl, not letting the dog knock the bowl out of your hand. Um, some dogs can get really, really crazy and ridiculous about this. Um, you just need to get them to calm down. And we, we wanna make sure that your dog is like in a calm state of mind when you're doing these things. We wanna make sure that, you know, relax and then I'll feed you. Calm down, then I'll feed you. Relax and I'll pet you. Calm down and I'll pet you. So we wanna make sure that these dogs are getting their reward, whether it's their food or attention, by just relaxing a little bit before we go ahead and feed them or pet them. One of the first things that you need to uh, teach your dog how to do, whether he's a service dog or a pet, it's just, you know, basically service dogs are, are well-trained pets that we just take their training a little bit farther. We, we go from good house manners and good manners around children and, and walking in your neighborhood to taking that to public places. But all dogs are really trained the same way. They're all started the same way. Um, they're just trained a little bit farther into different behaviors. So uh, it doesn't really matter if you've got a pet dog, a therapy dog, or a service dog, or a dog that you're, you're thinking about doing any of those things with, you've got to start in the same place. So jumping up on people is probably one of the 
there's a couple different things that, that over the years that people have really, I don't want to say complained about, but they really, really want their dog to stop doing. One of them is jumping on people. The other one is, is coming when called. And the other one is walking nicely on a leash. So if you get those three things under control, it makes your life a whole lot easier. So I have a bowl and I've got, there's food, there's treats inside here. And you can see Joy, that it's, she's not jumping at me. There's a lot of dogs that, you know, will just literally, you, they won't keep their feet on the ground when there's any kind of food around. Um, so that also happens when there's people, children, you know, children or, or people that are being super friendly. Good girl. That's a good girl. Nice girl. Um, so we want, we want to keep these feet on the ground. So the first thing we do is we just work on, if she goes to try to jump up on this, I'm going to tell her, uh-uh. But the big thing that I want her to do is sit. So if I have something in my hand and if she were to go to try to jump on me, I would just sit. So you've got to get a really solid sit to get rid of the jumping. So there's a lot of different approaches to don't jump on me. And you know, some of this stuff is I'm in training for almost 40 years and you know, Back in the day, people did a lot of this kneeing behavior or they do all kinds of crazy stuff with their hands, step on their toes, grab their paws, all kinds of crazy stuff. The biggest thing that you can do is if you get a solid sit on your dog, you're going to really, really just completely stop all that jumping because it's an incompatible behavior. So if the dog goes to jump on you, you can say, no, don't jump on me, sit. And if you do, I'm going to give you a, a reward. So as much as possible, we do a lot of behaviors where, you know, we're holding this. If she starts to jump, sit. Good girl. And I'm using a clicker. You can use a behavior marker and we'll talk about that in a minute as well, but she understands a clicker. Sit. Good. That's a good baby. If someone were to walk over here and she would start to get too excited or start to jump on them, sit. And then I can reward her for the sit. So I'm going to work a lot on just random sits. So I'm just going to walk around, sit. And it, you just, you have to click and feed every single time or at least do a marker of good, sit, good. I want to teach her to put her butt on the ground in a variety of, of, of situations, a ton of different situations. When people walk in the door, sit. When people um, approach her, sit. When you're, you know, if there's somebody out, uh, a neighbor that comes over, sit. Don't have people pet them. Don't have people, you know, it's like, oh, I want to say that. No, 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 sit. We're going to work hard on sits. And if your dog doesn't know how to sit, guys, it's really pretty easy. You take a tasty treat, you stick it up over their nose, gravity takes hold, butt goes down, nose goes up, and they sit. As soon as that dog's butt hits the ground, we're going to say good, yes, click, whatever you're going to say. That's a marker that says, I like what you did. Okay, so it's very clear to the dog. And feed them right away. You know, they don't have to stay in a sit right now. It's just sit. Sit. Good. Because a stay literally is continue sitting. So if I were to sit, good. If she gets, goes to get up, I'm just going to tell her to sit again. Sit. Good. Sit. Good girl. Sit. I'm going to reward her while she, uh-uh, sit. Good. So you can tell her, uh-uh, sit. Get your butt down. Now, if she lays down, she's just trying to do a bunch of different things. Watch the floor. The floor in here is pretty slippery, so it's a little hard for her to hold that sit. So again, she's going to want to lie down because it's slippery. So we would want to practice our sits either on a carpet, a rug, or even a, like a little placemat for her. I really don't care that she's doing that. She wouldn't be jumping on someone because she, again, is laying in a down or she's, you know, we can get her right back into that sit. Sit. Good. So if a dog approaches, sit. If a person approaches, sit. If she approaches someone else, sit. Now you have to do this on a leash because you've got to have control of your dog. You've got to be able to say, and I'm not pulling her into the sit. I'm just working on nose up, butt down, sit. Good girl. You just randomly walk around the house, kitchen, bathroom, back porch, front porch, driveway, Put your butt on the ground and then add some distractions. Uh, there's a lot of distractions. You guys know that they get excited over different things. Start simple and work your way up until they can walk up and sit right next to a stranger. Um, and they're not going to have a problem jumping on them. If they, you know, if they start to get out of control, back away a little bit. Put some distance between you and the person, you and the dog, you and whatever. Um, you know, if the dog likes chasing squirrels, you know, do this 
we're at their favorite tree, you know, get back a little bit from the tree and work on, sit your butt down, even though there's a squirrel in the tree. So really, really work hard on sit. If you get that solid sit, you're not gonna have jumping.